Welcome to episode 7 of module 8, Non-Infectious Diseases and Disorders. We are continuing on with inquiry question 5, looking at technologies used to assist people who experience disorders. Our syllabus reference for this video will look at the causes and structures and functions of visual disorders and look at technologies to assist people who have vision disorders and the technologies such as spectacles and laser surgery. Our learning intentions for this video, we will outline the parts and the function of the eye, describe the cause and effect of visual disorders, and then look at examples of technologies used to assist with the effects of visual disorders. Let's look at the parts and the function of the eye first. The eye is a complicated organ made up of receptors called photoreceptors that take in light energy from the surrounding environment and transform it into electrical energy, known as nerve impulses. These impulses are then transmitted to the brain via the optic nerve, where they are then processed into visual perception. The eye is composed of three layers. The sclera forms the opaque, tough, protective coat that surrounds the majority of the eye. The majority of the blood vessels are found in the choroid layer, which, this, which is the central layer of the eye. In order to make the eye light tight and lessen light dispersion or reflection within the eye, the posterior or the choroid layer is black. The ciliary body, lens and iris are all formed from the front section of the choroid layer. The retina is the inner layer of the eye. It contains photoreceptors called rods and cones that are situated at the back of the eye. The rod and cone cells are stimulated by light focused on the retinal surface and transform this light energy into electrical nerve impulses that are sent via the optic nerve to the brain. At the front portion of the eye is the conjunctiva, which protects and lubricates the eye through the production of tears and mucus. The cornea provides protection for the lens and also acts to refract the light entering the eye. The pupil adjusts the amount of light entering the eye. The coloured part of our eye is referred to as the iris. It is the muscles in the iris that control the contraction and dilation of the pupil. The lens is the clear part of the eye behind the iris that helps to focus light and images onto the retina. The curvature of the lens is changed by the ciliary muscle, so the lens can refract the incoming light to form a focus image on the retina. This allows focused vision of objects at different distances. The vitreous humour is a jelly-like clear fluid that also refracts the light and helps to maintain the shape of the eyeball. The process by which the lens changes curvature is called accommodation. The lens's curvature must alter to refract the light by the appropriate amount so that the objects at any distance can be sharply focused and seen on the retina. More refractive correction is required for light entering the eye from close objects than from distance ones. The amount that light is refracted as it passes through a lens increases with its curvature, higher refractive power. Because the lens of the eye has elasticity, its curvature can be changed by the actions of the ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments. When the eye views distant objects, the ciliary muscles relax, drawing the sclera back, which holds the suspensory ligaments taut. This has the effect of lengthening the lens, decreasing the curvature and reducing the refraction of the eye. To focus a clear image of a close object on the retina, the curvature of the lens must be increased to increase the refractive power of the lens. This is achieved by ciliary muscles contracting, which draws the sclera forward and releases the tension on the suspensory ligaments. This allows the lens to become rounder, increasing the curvature and refracting the light to a de greater degree. Let's move into looking at visual disorders. Myopia, also known as short-sightedness, occurs when images are clear close up, but images further away are quite blurry. This means that the image falls in front of the retina as opposed to on the retina. This could be caused by the eyeball being overly long, the cornea refracts too much light entering, and the ciliary muscles when contracting may not flatten the lens sufficiently. Hyperopia, on the other hand, is also known as long-sightedness. So images close up are quite blurry, whereas images farther away are clear. 
This occurs because the image falls behind the retina. This could be caused by the eyeball being too round, the lens is too flat, or the refractive power is too low. A cataract is a clouding of the lens that lowers the lens ability to transmit light. This results in heightened sensitivity to the glare of intense sunshine and impaired vision of both close and distant objects. Most cataracts develop as part of the aging process, long-term and unprotected exposure to UV sunlight, smoking, diabetes, and long-term use of corticoid steroids use are among the increased risk factors of developing cataracts. Now we'll move into looking at technologies to manage visual disorders. Spectacles are thought to be first invented in the later part of the 13th century. They were developed as corrective lenses for those with visual impairments. Today, we more commonly use the term eyeglasses or just glasses. Eyeglasses help to fix the incorrect placement of an image on the retina due to disorders like myopia and hyperopia. Glasses are made of lenses that can either be convey, concave or convex. When light enters the lens, it is refracted or bent. The lenses in glasses correct vision problems by causing the light to bend and focus onto the correct side of the retina. A concave lens is used to correct short-sightedness, myopia. A short-sighted person's focus is focusing before the back of the eyeball. The concave lens pushes the rays of the light further apart so that they arrive together in proper focus at the back of the eye. For hyperopia, a convex lens is used to correct the disorder. As the focal point falls behind the retina, the refraction when light is passed through a convex lens causes it to bend and pull the light rays together so the focal point is corrected. The advantages of spectacles include that they're less expensive than surgery and unlikely to cause side effects as they don't touch the eyeball. Disadvantages, they are not suitable for some sports or jobs such as firefighters and athletes and they can easily be broken or lost. Laser eye surgery, also known as LASIK, reshapes the corneal tissue using a laser beam. This is done to focus light into the eye and reach the retina at the correct spot. Surgeons create a flap of the outside layer of the cornea in order to access the underlying tissue. Specialists have to use precise and use computer imaging technology to create detailed corneal images to guide the treatment. This surgery is ideal for people who are nearsighted, farsighted or have astigmatism. Laser eye surgery cannot correct all types of vision problems and other surgeries can involve implants or lens replacements to correct other disorders. An example of this is cataract surgery. The cloudy lens is removed and replaced with an artificial lens called an intraocular lens or IOL to restore clear vision. This surgery has been around for many years and lasers have been recently introduced to create incision, incisions to help break up the cataract. Lasers provide precise ways to cut into the eye to help rectify a diverse range of vision problems. For disorders such as myopia, it will flatten the cornea, whereas for hyperopia, it will increase the curvature. Advantages of laser surgery include the procedure being quick and painless and increase the quality of life. The disadvantage is that it, can't, it can cause over and under correction and it can only last up to 10 years. And that's the end of episode seven. Thank you for watching.